All right, Sheriff, you with me? Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Thank you for being here. My name is Sam Page. I'm Sheriff Rockingham County. Good to be in Raleigh. I was just thinking a little bit, you know, uh, I grew up on Andy Griffin, and I was thinking a little bit, and I said, you know what the legislature did last, uh, the other week, on this bill, House Bill, they nipped that ordinance in the bud. Yeah, yeah. I want to recognize a couple of my sheriffs that were able to make it here today. I got Sheriff Terry Johnson from Alamance County. Raise your hand, Terry. I got Sheriff, I got Sheriff Charlie, uh, Charlie McDonald from Hendersonville. Charlie! And Sheriff Andy Stokes from Davie County. And we're not going to be singing, trust me. We're not going to be singing. I just want to tell you a little bit about the Sheriff's Association. On, on the 17th, the Legislative Committee, 17th of March, came before us about the ordinance down in Charlotte. The discussion what came about. And this was a position that was recommended to the Sheriff's Association to our Executive Committee, which was to support legislation that would overturn local ordinances that would allow persons of one gender to use the restroom of another gender. Public safety was the main concern. And common sense. And common sense. Ladies and gentlemen, there was a famous Sheriff, Buford Pusser. You probably heard of him in Tennessee, right? I know we got some beautiful Apostle fans out here, but I understand it. Yeah, that's right. But I understood that he said that there comes a time in your life when you got to stand for what you believe in. And today we believe in HB two, and it's passed. We live in the greatest state in the U.S., and we got the greatest governor, we got the greatest leadership, and the greatest general assembly. Let's give them a hand. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been stated, it's been stated that the first responsibility of government is to protect its citizens, no question. In law enforcement, sometimes our job has been compared to sheepdogs protecting sheep from the wolves. We are the protectors, and that's what we do. When I first heard about this bill, the first thing I thought about was not LGBT. What I thought about was sexual offenders and predators, over 17,000 in North Carolina that affect our families, our kids are potentially could victimize. That's what I thought about. We have to monitor, investigate, track. You know you call your sheriff's department regularly to ask where persons are living, verify. That's why we have that sexual offender registry so you'll know or you can call us. But I want to thank the governor for signing this bill, HB2 uh, bill. And uh, it truly, as a sheriff, I believe it advocates for public safety. You know, while looking at this bill, I believe that the legislature's whole intent was to protect the families of North Carolina. Now I do believe, I do, do believe we live in a big state, a wonderfully big state, and I love North Carolina. I've lived here all my life except when I was in the military. But Charlotte, Durham, Raleigh, and Chapel Hill, I'm sure they have diverse uh, groups of people just like I do in my county. But I would believe that if you ask the majority of citizens of North Carolina how you feel on HB2, they would say, we support it. I want to be very clear, as a sheriff and as sheriffs, we serve all people in our communities, regardless who they are or where they come from. It doesn't matter. You call us, we come to help you. We serve all people equally and fairly under the law. I believe if the Charlotte officials would have taken the time, and, and I'm not sure if they did, but if they would have taken the time to sit down with some of the legislative representatives and brought that information to the short session and sit down with our lawmakers, maybe a bill could have been crafted that was good. But what I saw in the ordinance, I have a lot of problems with it as a public safety official, as a sheriff of my county, and I have great concerns of the enforcement uh, with that ordinance in place. But I do want to thank uh, everyone uh, in regards to supporting House Bill 2. As a sheriff, I'm concerned about one victim of sexual assault, just one or victimization of any kind, just one, that's one too many. I'm going to digress just a little bit because it's still about victims. In San Francisco, there was a sanctuary city bill or ordinance where the sheriff and law enforcement could not share information with the, local, with the federal authorities, ICE. They had a person that had been convicted, tried, spent his time, was ready to be released. But because of this ordinance, they could not provided information to ICE to pick this person up and transport him back to Mexico where he'd been, uh, where he'd come from. Convicted criminal offender. 
Shortly after that, Kay Stanley died. She was killed unnecessarily. And I would think that just like the ordinance with the sanctuary city bills and other ordinances, our cities nearly need to think what they're enacting and how it can impact public safety. That's what we do. When we discuss public safety in North Carolina working with the legislature, we want to discuss it with common sense. Common sense and again about public safety. I came here today as sheriff and I support the bill. But, uh, and I'm here with my fellow sheriffs to stand in support of the law. Some of the sheriffs could not make it today. Uh, but we've talked about some concerns about public safety here in law enforcement. I appreciate all of my fellow sheriffs that were able to make it. I thank the governor again, our legislature, for standing up for what is right. Because remember, what is right will always be the right thing to do. Thank you and God bless you all.